Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Drawing and Dragons. I'm Alec, your host, and this week I'm doing something very different. I'm actually getting back to my roots, and I'm doing a drawing. I know, crazy, right? It's been a long time since I've done a drawing. Um, but this one is a little bit shorter. Uh, I am a part of a D&D uh, subreddit for YouTubers like me that are very low-level YouTubers, and we kind of help each other out, give each other constructive feedback and things. And one fun thing we're doing is each month we're doing a special topic video. Um, and so this month is magic items. So I said, you know what? I'll draw one of my magic items. Let's get to it. All right, so as you can see here, I am getting right into it. The magic item is the Staff of the Far Traveler, as you can tell by the title of the video. Um, the Staff of the Far Traveler is a sort of worn-down wooden staff. It's got bumps and nicks and dents in it. It's not by no means a clean or beautiful wizard staff. No, this is the staff of someone who travels, of someone who journeys far, um, someone who needs to balance across a log, someone who needs an extra walking stick, um, someone who needs to know which direction they are going, but more importantly, where they have already been. Uh, that is the purpose of the Staff of the Far Traveler. Uh, what it allows you to do is it has a magical sigil, like rune, on it. And when you press that and tap it to the ground, you create a little flare, a little red flare of magic that uh, appears on the ground and marks that spot. And the mark does disappear, unless you, the Dungeon Master, don't want it to. Um, but the mark disappears, and then as you travel and journey, if you take this staff and you balance it on a stone, like you'll see in the picture here that I'm drawing, uh, as if you balance it on a stone and you press the red sigil, it will slowly begin to turn, and the arrow on the sigil will point towards the mark that you made however long ago. And it works no matter how long ago the mark was placed, as long as you is on the same plane of existence as the staff right and so the purpose of this is that you know you can mark the city gate and then you can go exploring adventuring do your quest and like well we don't really remember how we got here so now you can put down the staff turn and go maybe you get into a chase with someone or maybe you get uh tossed through a portal or maybe you are kidnapped you have that mark if you escape you can find your way back I, as a dungeon master, when I do this, if it's something very, very simple, uh, they this makes it so they don't need to roll any survival checks to find their way, because they can use this staff, activate this ability, and it allows them to essentially find where that mark is, and they can just head in that direction, right? If there's somewhere, like, really far away, maybe I would have them give them advantage or something, or if they're in, like, a particularly hostile terrain where, um, or really rocky terrain where it's not as simple as fall the straight line, right? You have to go around mountains and things. But either way, this staff essentially allows someone to not be lost because they can always find where that mark is. A couple ways you could change this. You could potentially make it so uh, you can make a mark, you can cast a mark outwards, and you can put it somewhere that you have been before. So maybe your player has been to that city way over there. Uh, they could press the button and sort of cast the mark out onto that onto a spot out right outside that city that they have seen. And then now when they balance the staff, it'll show them where they need to go. Um, that's another way you could potentially run this item. Um, that does make it a little bit stronger, of course, because then they really can't get lost. Uh, but then again, it has to be somewhere they've been. So if your party is uh, on a one-way street, if they're not going back and forth, it becomes a little less strong in that way. So I don't really think there's any huge problem with something like that. But as I have it just base, it allows you to place a mark and then be able to always find the direction of that mark. As long as you're on the same plane of existence, of course. Dungeon Masters as well. If you want to take this item and use it, go ahead. That's why I made it. I love it. Um, I gave it to my party at level, basically level one or level, or they technically received it a little bit like level three, I think, but they could have potentially had it at level one. And this would work very well as a level one or level two magic item. And I know usually people don't give out magic items that early, but this one... I mean, really, it is a utility item. Yes, uh, you could use it to overcome resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing damage, right? Because it does bludgeoning, and it's magical. So you could potentially overcome that resistance, but that's not super strong. It's good, especially if you have a monk uh, wield this weapon, or maybe even a fighter, I guess, could wield it too. Maybe a druid as well. So it could potentially could be very good, but not game-breaking, I don't think. I mean, you think about the cantrip shillelagh already lets you do that, essentially. 
But the whole purpose of this is that they can find their way uh, back to where they have been. And again, like I said, one modification you could do is allow you to find where you could go. Anyway, talking about this drawing for a bit. So if I'm if I'm uh, getting distracted, it's because I've been watching. I was not happy with this part here uh, where I have the two shadows overlapping. I, I tried to go back and kind of cover it up. And I also wasn't happy with how I didn't do the stone on the left there. I didn't do its shadow originally. Um... But I kind of had to just move on. I I didn't want to I didn't want to go like totally crazy on this drawing. I wanted this to be relatively simple because I want to see if this is something I could do in the future, do more videos like this. And this was. I mean, this took me about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, probably an hour and a half because I had to like eat food. I had to you know search up how to do a couple of things here or there. So about an hour and a half to two hours. But it was fun. I enjoyed it a lot, so I do plan on doing a couple more of these in the future. They won't be like my next, next videos or anything, but, I mean, maybe when I'm feeling artistic and I feel like I want to draw something, I'll probably do one of these. Speaking of that, if you have a cool magic item that you have made, please don't give me one that already exists in, like, the Dungeon Master's Guide. If you have a homebrew item and it sounds interesting and cool, leave in the comments below. Uh, I'll consider it. I'll, I, I might draw it. It could be really fun, especially if it's something cool looking and something that's not too difficult for me to draw. I mean, you can see my my level of artistic ability here. So if it's something around this caliber, I'll I'll give it a shot. And it could be really fun. So leave in the comments below. Uh, also, in the comments, give me what you would do for this item if you wanted to make a high-level version of it. Because this item, I imagine, is useful for, like, level 1 to 3 care, Like, 1 to 5, you know, that first tier of gameplay. I think beyond that, it's not super useful. Um, I mean, it, it has its use, but it, it gets to the point where it's like, why are we carrying this extra staff around when we can just have... When we can just find our way ourselves, and we're, we're capable people, right? So eventually, I imagine this would be kind of, become the kind of thing that they would sell off to someone else. And that's fine. There's nothing bad about that. There are plenty of items like that, like a drift globe, you know. I mean, drift globes are useful, but eventually it's like, well, we can just light a torch or something, right? So it's one of those items where it potentially could stick around for a very long time, but also because of its size, probably not. Um... So yeah, leave me, a, leave me a comment down below on what you think on how you could make this a higher level item. What sort of abilities would you give it? Um, and like I said, Dungeon Masters, if you want to take this item, make changes to it, let me know what changes you do make if you do. Or let me know if you use it. I, just, I like to hear. Um, that's all. I just like to hear. I, mean, I don't mind if people use it at all. Um, again, on this drawing, I was pretty happy with how the staff shading went and the, the the stones at the end and some of the rocks especially like the three or four on the left hand side and the one like the pointier one but those ones in the bottom right corner i was not happy with i did not do very well with those uh, but i'm doing this background i kind of like how i did it with the background i'm not super proud of the text uh box that i made but that's okay first first one right we're not here for professional uh perfection we're here for good enough good enough to show my players and impress them and as you can see this really didn't take too much time or too much effort so if you want to try this at home you definitely can it really didn't take too much um and you don't even need photoshop or something like that a lot of the stuff i did here you could easily do with gimp uh, the free program i just enjoy using photoshop i don't know why anyway that is it. That is the end of my video. Uh, thank you very much if you've made it to this point. I do have a link down below for the picture of the of the magic items. That way, if you use it in your game, you can show it to them. Um, if you want me to make like an edited version of the description or something, like if you give it a different use, I can do that pretty easily, so let me know. And don't forget to like and subscribe. But most importantly, have a great rest of your day, everyone.